William Wilberforce, was born in Hull and became an independent MP for Yorkshire in 1784. The following year, he became an evangelical Christian, which resulted in major changes to his life and a concern for reform. In 1787, he came into contact with Thomas Clarkson and a group of anti-slave trade activists. They persuaded Wilberforce to take on the cause of abolition. He headed the parliamentary campaign against the British slave trade for 20 years until the passage of the Slave Trade Act of 1807. Wilberforce was convinced of the importance of religion, morality, and education. He championed causes and campaigns such as the Society for the Suppression of Vice, British missionary work in India, the creation of a free colony in Sierra Leone, the foundation of the Church Mission Society, and the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Here's Arvo Pert's prayer for peace and deliverance from oppression.
in later years, Wilberforce supported the campaign for the complete abolition of slavery and continued his involvement after 1826 when he resigned from Parliament because of his failing health. That campaign led to the Slavery Abolition Act 1833, which abolished slavery in most of the British Empire. Wilberforce died just three days after hearing that the passage of the Act through Parliament was assured. He was buried in Westminster Abbey, close to his friend William Pitt the Younger. He is part of the Kyrie from St. John Chrysostom by another composer, Tchaikovsky. Wilberforce has long been viewed as a Christian hero, a statesman saint and a role model for putting faith into action. He's also been described as a humanitarian reformer who contributed significantly to reshaping the political and social attitudes of the time by promoting concepts of social responsibility and action. In the 1940s, the role of Wilberforce and the Clapham sect in abolition was downplayed by historian Eric Williams who argued that abolition was motivated not by humanitarianism, but by economics, as the West Indian sugar industry was in decline. More recent historians have noted that the sugar industry was still making large profits at the time of the abolition of the slave trade, and this has led to a renewed interest in Wilberforce and the evangelicals, as well as a recognition of the anti-slavery movement as a prototype for subsequent humanitarian campaigns. Here's the hymn that gave the title to the film of Wilberforce's life, Amazing Grace. <laughs> 